Let's apply the apply constraint process skill on this 700 level geometry question from the official guide. If you want to get notified as soon as we post questions and solutions, hit that subscribe button and the bell icon. Now, pause the video to solve the question, resume when you're done. Let's solve this question. The figure above represents an L-shaped garden. What is the value of K? So we need to figure out this is the L-shaped garden and we need to figure out the value of this dimension K. Now let's look at this image in a bit more expanded manner. Here's the image here. Um, now again, these are all 90 degrees here. So I just want to mark that, which means that really this tri th this image, this figure, this L-shaped garden is composed of two rectangles here. One is this pink rectangle, the longer rectangle, and the other one is, let's say, this green rectangle here. Okay. And in terms of dimensions, you see that you've been given this long uh, edge and then this other long edge as well. And then the smaller edges are K feet. Okay. So now um, we need to find the value of K. So we can do one thing over here. Let's assume that this dimension over here is X, this dimension. Okay, which means that this dimension x is nothing but 15 feet minus k. Okay, because this entire thing is 15 feet. So we are saying that if this smaller part is x, then this x is nothing but 15 minus k feet. Okay, so again, this way we have expressed this, this dimension as well in terms of the two in um, in terms of 15 and k okay so all right now with this information uh, let's move on to our statement one the statement one says that the area of garden is 189 square feet now what is the area of this garden now as we've already said that this garden is composed of two rectangles one is green rectangle the other is pink rectangle so the area of this garden is nothing but the area of the green rectangle plus the area of the pink rectangle, right? Okay, now what is the area of the green rectangle, which is our smaller rectangle? It is K into the other edge over here, 15 minus K, okay? Plus what's the area of the pink rectangle? It is 15 times K, okay? 15 times K, all right? Let's solve this. What do we get? 15K minus K square plus 15K which is equal to minus k square plus 30k. Now, what is this area given to us as 189 is equal to 189. So now this looks a very familiar um, form, which is our um, minus 30k. Let me just write this down plus 189. This is a quadratic equation. Let's solve the quadratic, quadratic equation. What do we get? K. Let's factorize this. K minus 21 into K minus 9 is equal to 0. This means K is equal to 21 or it's equal to 9, which means that this statement is not sufficient because we have two values of K. Um, that means we cannot really figure out which, which values is, is the right value. Um, so, which means that in terms of our answer choices, A, B, C, D, and E, A and D are no longer in the consideration. Now, before we move on to statement two, I want to do a course correction here. Okay. I want you to look at the figure and I want you to think about can K, let me ask this question, um, can K be equal to 21? Observe the figure and answer that question. The answer is no, it cannot be. Because the figure, this figure over here imposes this constraint that K is less than 15. Okay, and this is a constraint which you need to consider while you're solving this question. Okay. That's the constraint. So K cannot be 21. Why? Because according to the figure, according to the information that's given to you in the question statement, you inferred that K has to be less than 15, which means that this value is not possible, which means that this is the only possible value, which means that this statement is definitely sufficient, which means that 
choices A and D are very much in the running now. Okay. And the incorrect answer choices are B, C, and E. Okay. So this is where the constraint, identifying the constraints comes into picture. You need to be able to identify the constraints appropriately so that you consider those constraints while you're evaluating um, the correct answer. Okay. Now let's take a look at statement two and figure out whether statement two is sufficient or not. Now statement two says the perimeter of garden is 60 feet. Now I'm going to um, caution regarding one thing here. For statement one, we said that the area was the sum of the two, two given rectangles, right? Because that's precisely what the area is. I don't want you to do that same mistake for perimeter. Perimeter is not the sum of the perimeters of, of the two rectangles over here. Why is that the case? Because when you're calculating the sum, uh, what you may end up doing is you'll end up uh, double counting this edge. Okay, so don't do that mistake. With perimeter, the best thing to do is just go around the edges and, 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 and um, sum them up. So perimeter is 15. Let's start from this and, and go this way. 15 plus k plus 15 minus k plus, now again, this one will be what? Again, 15 minus k plus k plus 15. Okay. Now this is all equal to 60. Okay. So now let's open this up. What do we have? 15 plus K plus 15 minus K plus 15 minus K plus K plus 15. Okay. Now K and K get cancelled. This gets cancelled and you have 1, 2, 3, 4, 60 is equal to 60. Oh, okay. So if you notice here, this thing is valid for all values of for all values of k okay which means that this statement is not sufficient which means that the correct answer here is choice a this is your correct answer okay so choice a is the correct answer now, um, we did this, all this analysis. Let's talk about statement two a little bit more. We did all this analysis, um, uh, calculation really, um, to, to figure out the perimeter. But if you think about it, you could, you could even visualize the same thing. You could do this without doing all this calculation. How, what can you visualize? Just, just observe this. And I'm going to draw this thing over here. If you simply take away this part and move it here, what do you get? You simply get 15 and this entire edge will be 15. This entire edge is 15. And then this edge is anyway given to be 15. So really speaking, when you're figuring out the, the, the perimeter, you simply move this edge up there and this edge up there. And what you get is a square 15 right? Which means that your perimeter is 60. So just from the information that's given to you in the question statement, um, you could figure out that the perimeter of this um, figure is actually 60. So the statement two was not giving you any extra information. Okay. So that could be the other way to, to have um, approach statement two. Either both the, both the approaches are absolutely fine, whichever approach you're comfortable with. Again, just process all the information step by step. That is the main thing. Okay. And again, I want to draw your attention to the inference, to the constraint aspect of it. You would have selected incorrect answer over here had you not considered the constraint, which was, which had to be inferred from the question statement. Okay. Very, very important to to identify all the constraints. Now the constraints may be given to you um, in the question statement directly or it may be conceptual constraint, or you may have to infer the uh, constraint from the question statement. Watch the next video to see the application of this process skill on a number properties question.